in this boot camp. So uh, I want to make some comments on this. Um, uh, this boot camp has a diverse clientele. I had noted that in our opening setting, and uh, it's never more relevant than in this session. Uh, in this boot camp, uh, we have some that are hoping to hone their skills with uh, any logic modeling software and learn how to be productive modelers with that, um, uh, building, modifying, and subsequently advancing models. Others are looking to understand how these models are used, understand types of assumptions that go into them, understand a given model in terms of what assumptions are captured in it. There are folks here who are interested in becoming informed model users, consumers, team members, supervisors, sponsors. And I recognize that these are rather different needs. And this bootcamp is built big enough to try to speak to all of them at some level. Remember the analogy of the one-room schoolhouse. The ways in which it tries to do that is to invest in different methods of learning. As time allows, we're gonna have a case study this afternoon. Um, case study which Wade will be offering. We're also going to be having this bit of model building and we'll be having some group work in the form of, um, of incubator projects. Now, um, there will also be in this model building uh, some opportunities for those who are not interested in building models, but rather have enough authenticity of experience with them to understand what is represented. And I recognize that many people may go away from this boot camp and not build a model again, but having seen how they're built can be helpful to understand what they need. Understand the assumptions that are in them. Because if you do it, you start to kind of come to understand what, what assumptions come in while you're doing it. You start to understand the types of details you have to deal with and where those details are in the model. But let's let's go and invest in um, this sort of uh, model building exercise. And uh, we'll see how we can build up a model with some simple mechanisms that have great significance. Um, the state charts and capture heterogeneity in the population and capture population evolution and merchant behavior and all those sort of good things. So to do that, uh, I'd like to to go and uh, go back to any logic and we are going to stop this model that was running and we're going to go to the any logic interface and we're going to close this model that was there. Okay. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to share my screen over there. There we go. Okay. Great. Okay. So, um, Great. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do now is start a new model and you'll learn how these models um, get going. Uh, and we're going to go through a lot of details. Some of you, if you prefer to just sit back and relax, and watch what I'm doing and hear my descriptions and see it, you're welcome to do that, either online or in person. 
I will be posting this model periodically. You'll see me posting it to the site. Okay, so there'll be a, an area of models built in class, and I will I'll be posting successive versions. You can always get those versions. So if you'd rather not follow along yourself, point and click, and rather just try to soak up what I'm trying to do and the, the, the arc of the story, I'm perfectly happy with that. And I view that as an excellent use of time as well. But many of you will want to get involved, hands-on, and that's also welcome. Okay, so we're gonna go over here in any logic. We've closed everything here. And we're going to say new model. So file new, new model, okay? There we go. And it's going to be called smoking and heart, heart disease. Um, uh, tempted to call it, yeah, uh, smoke and heart disease V1, okay? The V1 is, is for version one. And you'll notice that when we do this, there's a important choice. There's some kind of pro forma things here, but then there's a, there's a thing called model time units. And that's really important. The question here is what is the time unit used what does one mean in terms of time? One unit of time. Does it mean a day, a year, an hour? What does it mean? That last hour, it was hours. That last model, it was hours. An earlier model, I think it was days. This time, it's going to be years. One will mean one year. That's what I'm describing. It gives the kind of the meter stick, or for our U.S. colleagues, the yardstick by which we judge time. It does not mean it goes one year at a time forward. It does not mean that. It's actually going as quickly forward or slowly forward as it needs to get everything done. Sometimes you may have to simulate things every few minutes, the arrival of a person into a clinic or what have you. Other times it may go a week at a time, but one is going to mean one year. So we're going to say one year. There we go. Finish. One year, and it's going to create this model, and it's thinking, and maybe yours is faster than mine. Okay. Okay. Um, so when we've done that, if you go over to the projects window, you'll notice that it's stopped your project. It's, it's built the project with some pre-existing features. There's main. Does anyone remember what main is? Does anyone remember the main? Anyone remember what this is? What is main? It's the overall situation. It's the, the overall kind of the world of the whole, the whole world of the model. Okay. Um, it's the stage in which everything happens in the model. And it's going to hold our population of people. But first, we're going to define personhood because we can't have a population of people until we define personhood, what it means to be a person for this model, personness. So to do that, you have to right click on smoking and heart disease. Oh, 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 uh, mumble. Um, for some reason, it's threatening me to shut down. Thanks. Um, uh, um, okay, um, mumble, um, okay. Okay, so if you go to this model, right click and say new and do agent type. So how did I do it? I right clicked on the whole model, A, uh, TAs, please uh, be prepared to burn your lunch by helping. Okay, so, so, so um, those in the chat, those in the room, please raise your hand uh, at any point to get TA help. They stand ready. Um, so right click on the model, choose new and agent type. 
And I'm going to choose person, capital P, with a capital P. Okay, and, and I'm just gonna use those default settings and I'm gonna say finish. How did I do that? I right clicked here on the name of the model. I said new, agent type, and I said person, okay? Okay, who needs help here? Okay, I'm sure there's there's people who will require help, so. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we just said person. You'll notice that there's now a person here. Do you see this person? You see it says person? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm hearing a lack of conviction. Um, is, yes. Can I help with anything? <laughs> can I help with anything? Okay. Okay, not. Okay, so. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so. Here's person. Now we're going to lend this person a face upon the world. Okay. Um, we're going to to give them some illustration. And to do this, I'm going to go for the very simplest thing down below agent. Remember this agent palette? Remember we used the palette before to drag things in? We had transitions and parameters. We're going to go the other another sub palette just below that called presentation. And that presentation, we're going to drag in an oval, ladies and gentlemen, an oval. There we go, an oval. Okay. And we're gonna make this oval smaller. Okay, and uh, I'm going to make it small enough that it, it will appear here. Okay, the exact size is not critical. If you want in the appearance area, excuse me, position and size, you can set it for a radius of 10. How did I do that? I went in the palette, I went down to this presentation area and I dragged in an oval and I situated it on this line here. It's, it's valuable if it's on this line, it will simplify, you won't have to worry about some things. And, and I made its radius 10, okay? that's on this cross here. This is in person. Don't do it in main, do it in person. It's a it's a face of the person upon the world, this oval, okay? So this oval is in person, make sure it's in person. Okay. All right, are we okay with that? Okay, so each person has is going to have the appearance of an oval right now, which is admittedly stylized. Um, uh, we're going to come back to this, and we're going to use that oval to good effect. But first, I want to set up a population of people. Right now, we have a theory of personhood, but we have no people in the model. Let's go add some people in our model. Shall we not? Thank you. Thank you. So, so let's go to Maine. Let's go to Maine because Maine is going to hold the population. Remember, Maine is the overall environment. It's the global environment. It's the stage in which the agents strut. It's the the place that all the the entire situation for the world is happening. So we're going to add a population. Are we ready for this? Okay. So to add this population, what we're going to do is just a little bit of, of detail. We're going to go over to the project, make sure the main is showing, make sure main's canvas is showing. We're going to go over to projects and we're going to see person here. And we're going to click and drag it over and until it lands in this area of main. And you notice it says person. I'm going to type population. But if you didn't, if you didn't do it in time, if it somehow didn't didn't let you do that, then make sure it's selected. 
because it's selected, it'll be in the properties window and go and write population. Population. Okay. TAs, um, prepare for deployment. Prepare for imminent deployment. Okay. Okay. Please scan. Please, please scan for trouble. Please scan for need. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so I what did I do? I clicked on person, I dragged in, and I let go, and then I called it population. I either typed it right there or having selected it, I go to properties window and I type population. Who needs help? Okay, um, how about online? Um, do online people need help? Breakout rooms beckon online, okay? Okay, so here's a thing that says population, but it's actually not yet a population. Can anyone think in the properties window, what do you think I have to do to turn this into a population? Anyone? Look, look at that properties window. It's just yearning for some for you to do something to it to make this a, a, a honest to goodness population. And what is that thing? Okay, it's, it's a good idea, but but not, not, not quite. It's actually something more basic than that. It's right up here at the top. This population, is it a single agent or is it a what? Population of agents. And we're going to let there be 100 agents up front. I'm going to come back to that, but 100 agents, okay? 100 agents. Ladies and gentlemen, you have built your first, you know, like model with people in it. Let's go, let's go run this model. Um, so I saved it and I'm gonna go press this button up here next to the green button. There's a thing, looks like it is one zero one zero on it. It says build model. I'm gonna press that and it, it, it should say, if it's a happy camper, it should say build completed successfully down here in the lower left. If it doesn't say that, it will express its displeasure to you and the TAs will rush to your side if beckoned, and they will help you. Okay, so press this button and make sure it says build completed successfully. Make sure it's a happy camper, okay? Okay, okay, TAs, I, I admire your action stance. Um, so so this is great. Um, you're, you're, your your uh, vigilance is appreciated. Who needs TA help? Who needs TA help here? Okay. Okay, we're on the cusp of our first bit of greatness. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to realize the greatness? Okay. Um, let the earth shake them. We're going to go, if it builds successfully, if it's a happy camper, you can right click on simulation and you can say run. Now, the greatness will be implicit, and I will tell you you are great, but um, uh, but it's uh, it may not be obvious how great you are quite yet, but if you've read, run this model, and it says population person 100, and if you go and you look in this area, there you are, a population with 100 people in them. What do the people look like? They all look like what? What do all the people look like? They, they, do they look like squares? Do they look like <laughs> do they look like stars? What do they look like? They look like circles. Okay, good. But they're all on top of each other. If you run them, the reason you can't sense your greatness is because all of the Agents are stacked like cordwood on top of each other in one and and with one sort of long tube of agents on top of each other that are all circles. It circles all the way down. So we're going to make it more interesting. We're going to spread those agents out so you can see them in all their rightful glory. Are you ready for this? Okay, you've touched greatness, and then we're going to go towards grasping it more fully. Are you ready for that? Okay. Okay, hearing no objections. So I'm going to go to Maine. 
we're going to go to Maine and we're going to go to Maine and we're going to go down to the space and network area. Okay. Space and networks. And this is going to be our key right now for laying people out in a, in a, uh, in a way that, that is more interesting. We're going to lay them out randomly. So layout type. So how did I do? I went to Maine. I went to the properties window. I went down to space and network, which is your friend. Make sure you remember that friend. Make sure you don't forget that friend. Um, and you go down to the space and network and there's layout type and make sure it's random. Okay. Okay. And now I want you to build the model and make sure it's a happy camper. And now I want you to run the model. And, and I think you will start to realize more fully the greatness of your model. Okay. Okay. There you are. Who are these? What are these dots? on? What are these circles on the screen? Can anyone say? What are those circles that lie before us? Anyone remotely? Anyone locally? Those are people. But suppose we set it to a population. This is a population of what? Anyone remember? Oh, it, it was a population of 100 right now. Why do I say that? Because this says 100. Do you see that? Let's change it to 1,000. Are you ready? Can we change it? Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. I just... Ah, okay, I just screwed something. Okay. I'm going to change it to a thousand. What do you think we'll see now? If we change it to a thousand. Can anyone say? Okay, yeah. And, and so what will it look like visually? Will it be more crowded or less crowded? Okay, more crowded indeed. Yes. Um, there we go. There's a thousand people. Okay. Now, this may not. Somehow I sense the crowd isn't going wild yet. Um, but, but uh, you know, you're, you're, you're on your way towards greatness, okay? Um, yeah, a TA up front, that's great. Um, uh, okay, so a thousand people, did we see that? Okay. So these are people, they lie before us. But ladies and gentlemen, it's tedious if every time, it's tedious and error prone, if every time we want to change the population, we have to go in there and type in this new number there. It'd be nicer if we could run the model sometimes to the small population, sometimes to the larger population, with different assumptions. How do we tell the model about what assumptions to make and communicate those assumptions to the model? What do we do? Do you say what? It begins with a P. It ends with an R. It has an R. Sorry? A parameter. a parameter. Thank you. Good. My ear could have come off if I had kept it. Okay, so it's a parameter, ladies and gentlemen. It's a parameter. So we're going to put a parameter in main that's going to be called population size. Okay. Where do I get parameters from? Where do I go for a parameter? Can anyone remember? Where can I go get a parameter? Anyone remember where we used to go get the parameter from? Once we came, once it came, the palette is right. And where in the palette? In the yes, in the agent, in the Da Vincian logo of kind of like the measure of man from Da Vinci. Um, in this thing right here, do you see this? There it is. There it is. Parameter. It stands before us. So I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to put it over here. It's kind of a best practice to put it over there. And I'm going to say population size. There we go. Population size. Okay. Now, so this is this is where I have to start having been fired you up, having having energized you, having perhaps elated you with the greatness of your model, showing different numbers of agents. Why are you laughing at Jenna? Um, I uh, you now now I have to bring it down to reality. So when you say population size, it's very picky. You can't put a space there, okay? So it has to be all one word. And the way in which we often deal with this is one of two ways. We either put it 
we we type population size and we capitalize each word in, uh, after the first to indicate that it's a new word, or we put an underbar there as kind of underscore character. There's two different ways, two different styles. I like the first style, which is called camel case, because it it's like a camel's back, like a dromedary, where it has two humps. Yeah, maybe maybe that's lost to most people, but um, uh, so so it's called camel case because it yeah camel is humps. Um, and this is humps population size. Okay, so moving right along, um, uh, if you go to agent. And we went to agent, we dragged in a parameter and we called it population size. But I, I gotta tell you something else that's gonna hurt a little bit. Are we ready? Okay. Okay. Um, so population size is gonna, it's gonna be a, what is it gonna be? What is, what is the population size gonna be? If we say the population size is 300 people or a thousand people, it's a count, isn't it? It's a count of people. Now, there's a special way we tell this that it's a count, okay? It's it's something called a type. When we're dealing with any logic, and we're dealing with programming languages more generally, um, a lot of them require you to say, what's the type of something? And you actually have a lot of choices. You can say, this is a person, or this is a service dog, or this is a color. Here, it's an integer. An integer is something that's, in general, it's zero, one, two, three, four. It could be negative, but but in this case, we don't we don't certainly don't want that. But it's an integer. It's a count. Okay. And in general, counts are going to be integers. And what is its default value going to be? A hundred. So if we don't specify anything in a scenario, it'll be a hundred by default. A hundred people in our population. That's going to be our population size. So each scenario is going to be able to say what the population size is that it wants to use. You can have some big scenarios, you get lots of people, and some small scenarios that have few people. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, so we say population size. Mm -hmm. Great, that's the population size. Lucky that. But if we run this, is that really going to be the population size right now? Is that actually enforced that it's a population size? The answer is no. Where is the real population size right now specified? It's it's in this population. By the way, did I put a I put a comma? Don't it, out out black comma. You're like we don't want a comma there. I don't know why there was a comma there. The comma's not good there. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, this says population size, but to really make it the population size, to realize it as the population size, we have to go to this population and say the initial number of agents is guess what? Anyone? Population size. Population size. You ready with that? Are we ready? Are we ready with that? Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we just added a parameter. It encodes assumptions and it communicates those assumptions. From the point of creation. What? So this is a where does this pop where does this parameter live? What what and what and what class does it live here? It lives in what? It lives in main. See that? Main. We could have parameters at a person level, which would tell the particular characteristics of that person. This is instead telling a characteristic of the whole model. And for a characteristic of the whole model, it is specified by the thing that creates main, which is the scenario. So if we go to the scenario, there's something called population size now. Every scenario is going to be able to specify the population size. So we're going to have here a uh, baseline, we'll call it baseline small population. And it's going to be 100 population. 
There we go. I called it baseline small. Now let's create another one. I'm gonna right click on this, say new experiment, and I'm going to call it baseline large population. And I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it uh, a thousand population. The model that you folks work with, the SHA, of 1.2 million population. So this isn't terribly large, but it will, it will, it will do for now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you see that? Okay, can we make sure it model builds? Okay, who needs more time? Who needs TA help? So TAs, uh, monitor the online chat. A, a, be vigilant about in-room activity. Who needs TA help more here? I want uh, TAs, please please circulate with, with uh, vigilance. Please, please keep your eye out for those in need. Okay, so far so good? Okay. Okay, that's that's good. Okay. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to go to baseline small, and I'd like you to run it. Make make sure you're this. Well, yeah. Anyway, um, so that's baseline small. What do you think will happen if we run baseline large? Anyone? More circles. More circles, because it has a thousand people instead of a hundred. The population size is a thousand, and therefore the population is of size a thousand. And there we go. And we could we could make it. You know, we could have a million one. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have a population. Its population is given by this parameter called population size. And in general, this holds. So this may seem like a really small thing, but please bear, bear, bear in mind that we saw this pattern this morning used for all sorts of parameters where we could change assumptions about do you remember the immunity duration? Do you remember that? We did it for the length of time till recovery, you know, how long they stayed infected before recovery. Remember that? It was the same basic pattern. So we've equipped our model with extra flexibility. Every, every time we change the parameter, we, we don't have to go in and fuss with changing it here. All we have to do is run the scenario we want with the parameter size we want. We can reuse it again and again and again. Even as the model evolves, it can be reused. Okay, so that's parameters. Parameters in main have their values specified by the scenario. Mm -hmm. And in general, parameters in a given place have their values specified by whatever creates them. So parameter in person is specified by by the uh, by the population that creates it or where it's created dynamically. Okay. Um, okay, are, are we, does anyone need help right now? Why don't I go post this model? Can I post this model for you? And so you can always get these models. I think that might be a good idea. And hearing no objections, I'm going to share it with you. So uh, here we go, and I need to find the right window, and it's not that one. Um, okay, I am, uh, I, I'm uh, engaging in um, exploratory activity. Okay, um, so I'm going to the to to this site, the ABM Bootcamp Two or Two Three, where the materials are, and I'm creating a folder called Models Built in class, not merely featured in class, built in class. And there it is. It's arrayed before us. We don't see it, if that's important. Um, do you see it now? No, like, are you trying to share your screen on this or? No. Okay. No, I, I just, I mean, if you want, I'll share my screen. It's not, it sounded like you wanted us to see it, so. Oh, I, um, well, if you're looking at participant resources, you may see it. Right. That's all. Um, okay, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go place it there, which normally I don't show students because it involves futzing on my computer with mumble things. Um, anyway, uh, 
So we're going and putting it from a model, smoking or heart disease version one. Okay, it is there. Okay, so if you go under participant resources, that's what you get by going AVM bootcamp two or two, three. You go to these participant resources where the example models were and the models featured in class and so on. It's there's a thing called models built in class, and here's this particular model as I have built it in front of you. Are we okay with that? So people can download it as they see fit. But meanwhile, we will get on to elaborating this in wonderful ways. Okay? Are we good with that? Okay. Hearing no objections. Um, we are going to continue now. Okay. So now is the real, going to be some real interesting action. Okay? Um, so we're going to now get to the heart of the matter. And specifically, we're going to get in place a state chart that shows people's smoking status. Are we ready for this? So suppose we want people to have a smoking status in the model. Where would it go in the model? Where would we go put it? Would we put it in a scenario? Would we put it in main? Where would we put it? We want people to represent people as being in one of three smoking status, possible three smoking stat high, I guess, maybe, uh, statuses. That doesn't sound right. Um, or never smoker, current smoker, former smoker. Where would we put that? Yeah. In person. And we'd use a what to, to express it. A, we've seen them a couple times today. A begins with S. State. State chart. I also called it one state diagram, but state chart. Yeah. Okay. You ready for this? Okay. Um, uh, the excitement is palpable. Okay. So let's go to person. And where can we find the building blocks of state charts? Does anyone remember in any logic? Palette. And where in the palette? The agent. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so in the agent. So we're going to add a state chart. Okay. And it's going to be called smoking state chart. So I'm going to go to person. Make sure you are person open. This is one of the most common mistakes that people put it in the wrong place. Don't put this in main because it's not the overall environment that alternates between smoking different smoking status, it's a person. So go to person and drag in smoke, uh, drag in the state chart entry point. It looks like this, it's the first one listed. And I'm gonna call this smoking state chart. Notice I'm using that camel case thing again with the capital S. Is this too small? Do you want me to make this bigger? Would it help for me to make it enlarged? Like for me to make it like this? Is that helpful? So much better. Oh, yeah. Really? Okay, okay, that's great. Great, okay. Smoking state chart. Where? Whence did, I, did this come? I got it from the state chart over here. You ready? Really exciting things like head. Really exciting things. You ready for this? Okay. Okay. So we add a smoking state chart. Now we have to add possible smoking states. So we're going to drag in a state called never smoker. We're going to drag in a state called current smoker. And we're going to drag in a state called, anyone want to guess? Yeah. Former smoker is right. Former smoker it is. Um, 
So, um, okay, former, former smoker. There we go. Are we ready? Are we ready for this? Okay, sure. Now, while, while, I, while people are getting up, let, let me make a philosophical observation. You said that system science is the science of the whole. It's about these systems where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. You heard me say that, right? It's, it's about systems that are are more than about their pieces. They behavior at a higher level, like a traffic thing, traffic jams of patients across the care system, you know, issues of, of, you know, spread of infection that are a lot more than about the peace. And one of the key realizations is about interconnections between things. It's not the pieces, it's the interconnections between them that's often the more central things and the implications of those those um, those connections writ large. So we have the pieces here of a state chart. What are we missing? What are we missing in this state chart? Can anyone say? Speak as if in one voice. Well, okay, failing that, speak as if in different ways. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, the transitions, right? We're missing the interconnection. So we got to add them. So what sort of interconnection might there be between never smoker and current smoker? What mechanism might that represent? Someone is what? Never smoker to current smoker to current smoker. Okay, okay. So never smoker to current smoker. Then there might be, could someone go from current smoker to former smoker? What would that be called? Cessation, Cessation or quitting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Informally. Or former smoker to current smoker, does that happen? Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, it does. Sadly, it does. Sadly, an awful lot. And, and we call it relapse, um, is the, the common term for it. So never smoker to current smoker it goes by different names, uh, but initiation is one of the, the more common one in tobacco literature. Um uh and we're going to we're going to go have a state, a transition that will go there. Now um, I told you before, you can go click and drag this in, but you want to make it green on both sides. Green is the color and state starts are the game. So you want to click uh, there and and you want to click here and make sure it goes in there. Okay, there you go. Um, don't make sure it doesn't go like off and, and even if it's close, it's not actually connected if it looks like that. Um, so you need to make sure it docks in there. Make sure it's green. That's how you know it's 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 docked in. Are we okay with that? Okay. So never smoker to current smoker. And now we heard, can someone go back from being a current smoker to a never smoker? No. But current smoker, could they become a former smoker? Yes. Indeed, through cessation, right? And so we'll connect that in the same sort of way. And then former smoker, and you know, it can be kind of truculent, but don't worry, we can we can rest it to our will afterwards. Here we go. There we go. Current former smoker to current smoker. Do you see that? Hmm? And maybe you want to futz with it to make it a little bit more symmetric, something like that. Are we okay with that? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, remember I said that these models are a lot more than data. People get caught up in, in data. Say, what data is in there? The data is no good. The model is no good. The data is no good. With any data, you can get anything out of the model. And again, that's not the term type. Structure determines behavior much more than than, than parameter values. Parameter values do make a difference, 
but they're within the bounds of what's allowed by the structure, within the bounds of the types of behavior the structure will support. This is a very particular structure. It has implications, no matter what the parameters, they're not going to be different. For example, the number of never smokers is never going to go up here. Right? I and mean, if you have a, a fixed population of never smokers at the beginning, it's only going to stay the same or go down. There's no way for it to go up. There's certain invariants that are applied by the structure, certain, you know, invariable, you know, in, invariant truths, certain regularities that will not go away no matter what parameters you give. The parameters tweak around it, and they can make a difference in behavior between, um, you know, a dying out or living, but they, they adjust it within the realm of what's allowed. Okay, so we have these, we have this um, this alternation between current and former smoker, okay? So that's all nice, that's great. Um, I'd like to color them, okay? I'd like to make uh, uh, never smoker, I'd like to make it green, lime green. I'd like to make current smoker red, and I'd like to make former smoker um, uh, gray. There we are, gray. There we go. Are we okay with that? Okay, now, for this next little bit, um, I'd like you to, to go and try building your model. I'm gonna be releasing mine shortly for your uh, thing. I'm gonna call it version two, but, uh, first, I want to go build this here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna build it. Make sure it's a happy camper, okay? And I'm gonna call mine version two. But um, make sure it's a happy camper, and then let's run it, okay? I'm gonna say baseline large here. Run, okay? Who needs help? Anyone online need help? Anyone online? Oh, would we put it in? Okay, I'm afraid I, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, it says it's running. Let's go look at the population. So, I just ran this. Who are, what do these circles represent? Who can remind me? What do they represent? Who are these circles? They're people. Let's go drill down to the population. Here we are. Here's person zero. What state is person uh, zero in right now or now or now? What states are they going between? Can anyone see? They're going between former and what? And current. Yeah, they're actually blinking back and forth. And hideous kind of um, alteration. Okay, uh, Back and forth, back and forth right now. Now, if we go look at person one, so this is this is person zero. Let's go look at the next person. They're also in the same loop. Now, this is a bit tedious, though, to go down and look at each person. So, ladies and gentlemen, can we make it visual? Can, can we make it so we can see it visually? Are we okay with that? Does anyone object? Okay, so let's let's go do that. I'm slowly, I'm slowly pushing your limits. Okay, so we're gonna go do it. I'm slowly teaching you little bits and um, I'm hoping not to overwhelm you. Uh, okay, here we go. And then Wade's gonna rescue us. Okay, um, he doesn't know it yet, but um, he's gonna give us a nice little case study. Okay, so in the palette, uh, we're going to drag in something we've never used before called a variable. Variables are used to encode things that change over time. Are we ready with this? Are we ready for this? Okay, this variable is going to be describing the person's appearance, their color. Okay, not not in a in any sort of ethnicity sense, but in the sense of what color we're going to make them with respect to their smoking status. So we're going to make it, no, I have to be careful. 
because we have quite a few U.S. participants online. And we have Canadian participants locally. And I don't want to run afoul of of um, ethnic, or excuse me, of, of national ambitions. I'm tempted to call this color. <laughs> okay, I think we will use color like this and because we are forced by the dictates of the American hegemony to use capital C color for the type of this. So I'm gonna call it color with a U. Now, some of the US folks may may violently object, in which case you can color it, you know, kid, you can um uh you can uh you know, proceed uh at your own risk. Um and I'm gonna say the type of this is gonna be color, capital C. The type says of all basically this capital C is set to us by the fact that Oracle Corporation, which owns Java, is an American company. So it's capital C color, okay, is the type of this. So color will hold a particular specific one of these colors. This is going to be the color for the person. Um, we could call it current color. will be something we could call it, but it's a type color. This specifies what things it can hold. It can hold colors, just like the population size could hold integer values. And its first value is going to be black, okay? Black. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Now, so we have this variable called color, and we're going to set this oval here. See this here, oval? Do you see that? We're, this oval, we're going to set it, its fill color to be this. And in order to do this, I need you to watch this. And I need the TAs to watch this, hawk-eyed. Ready? Okay. So for the fill color, you need to change it to be dynamic, and you need to make it given by color. Okay? Not, not capital C. Capital C refers to all possible colors. This is referring to this particular color, my color. Okay, color. Okay. Yeah, no, maybe we could get some photos sometime. Yeah. Um, it could be a group activity for the TS. Um, Okay, so what we, what have we done? We've set up a variable called color. It's of type color with a capital C and its initial value is black. And then we've set this, the, the fill color of this oval to be given by that color. So if I run the model now, first of all, make sure it will build. Go build it and make sure it's a happy camper. Down here, it should be happy camper. Do you see that? Are we ready? Okay. Okay. So, so we have the color variable and we have the oval up there. And this color variable has one initial color. What was that color? Anyone? Yeah. Black. So now we're going to run this. Mm -hmm. And what will we see? What do you expect to see? Yeah. Indeed, black circles, right? There we go. But my students know that I am apt to quote the bard. William Shakespeare's words resonate ever in my mind. And I will say, out, out, black spot. We can do better than this, okay? Um, so this is just a placeholder. And now we will live up to the promise of this model because we're going to set this color to be different based on what? Does anyone want to guess? 
I alluded to based on smoking status. So when they become a never smoker, we will set the color to be lime, L-I-M-E, okay? Like the limeys of old, of the British Navy. Okay, so not everyone I think was familiar with that reference. So we're gonna set the color to be lime here. And I need to break another difficult thing to you, I'm afraid. I need to tell you about semicolons. Ladies and gentlemen, any logic is based upon a programming language called Java. And Java suffers from cancer of the semicolon. Okay. Um, I didn't say it yet. But I didn't say it first. Alan Perlis at Yale said it. Um, although not exactly those words. Um, so, um, so here we are telling when we enter the state never smoker, we're saying, hey, set my color to be line. What will the effect of that be? Can anyone tell me? If I set my color to be line, what will happen visually when I'm running them all? Anyone? The line, the people will appear as line who are never smokers, right? Are we okay with that? Okay. And let's go do that. And we need a semicolon because we're telling it, do this. A semicolon means make it happen. It's a command. It's an imperative. We're saying like, do it. And, you know, it says, yes, man, and it doesn't, right? That's when it's being good. Um, and so that's why we need a semicolon. There's going to be many other places where all we need is a value, and we don't need a semicolon for that, it's just competing with value. But here we're saying, like, do this, set, set color to be blind. And we need it to get an action and do it. That's why we need a semicolon. It's a command. It's an imperative for saying, do this, buddy. Um, okay, take it from an old man. Okay, so for current smoker, guess what we're going to set color to? Anyone? We're going to set it to red. And do we need a semicolon? Yes. Darn right we do. Because we're saying, hey, get your... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You know, get go go set this to be red. And when we first former smoker, we're going to say color equals what? Well, yeah, it's actually gray. Um, uh, and and do we need a semicolon? We sure do. Okay, I, I know this is ugly, but sometimes ugliness begets beauty. Sometimes, from the ugliest seed comes the most beauteous of rose bushes. Um, and uh, here we go. So we've we've done that, and now let's build the model. Okay, TAs stand ready. TAs prepare for imminent deployment. Okay, code orange. Okay, okay, okay. So who needs help? This is as bad as it gets in the boot camp. This is just about as bad as it gets. This is this is like, um, this is you know the yeah, when the torture is. Is underway. Okay. Okay. So let's run this model. What will we see when we run this model? Anyone want to pause it? What will we see? Uh, the never smoker, current smoker, and former smoker according to the color. Like, okay. Green, red, Good. Green. And, and are, is everyone going to be um, uh, just one color and they're going to stay that color forever? Yes. Uh, Sub. We'll see a transition. We'll see transitions. That's exactly right. And we'll see transitions of a mighty interesting sort. What is happening? <laughs> All at the same time, in hideous synchrony, right? Yeah, that's right. 
I mean, you talk about peer peer pressure events, <laughs> and this is one of that effects, right? Yeah. So there's a very strict reason for it, and I'll tell you why this is. It's because I've spared you just a little bit, and, and we're going to be able to transcend that that limitation with excellence and and uh, delight and gusto in just a moment. Mark my words, okay? So you'll notice that these transitions, what sort of transition are they? They are a what transition. You can actually read it off. It's a what transition? A timeout transition. That means it will go off after exactly how many years? One, one. one year. So they were alternating every year their smoking status. First, they became a, a current smoker, and then they became a former smoker in one year, and then they became a current smoker. That's not, oh, come on. That's, I mean, like, it's stylized, but that's like utterly unrealistic. So let's turn it into rates. Can we make it a rate? A rate of initiating smoking? A rate of cessation? A rate of relapse? Can we do that? Let's do it. Greatness is in front of you. Greatness is your destiny. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, so let's let's go do this. But first I'm going to distribute version two to you. Are you ready? Version two is coming your way. Um uh in in all of its glory. Okay. Um so Okay, I somehow I missed that. Um, so here we go. Um, models built in class, and uh, I'm going to post this. Okay, so version two is is winged its way to you. It's posted right now. If anyone wants to get it, and gaze upon it in awe, like Ozymandias. Okay. Um, Okay, are we ready for this next step to put these with rates? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're, this is gonna be so exciting, okay? So go to Maine, we're gonna go down Maine and we're gonna add in a rate of initiation. We're gonna add in a rate of cessation and a rate of relapse. That's gonna be a per year hazard rate, a chance per year that they and it's actually going to be the number of times per year that they see smoking if they're a current smoker, or they relapse to smoking if they're a former smoker. And it's going to be the chance per year of starting to smoke if they're a, if they're a never smoker. Hmm? It's it's in, in by statistics we call it a hazard rate, chance per year. Same same thing. That's why, by the way, these models or a panic love is by statistical methods. You can, you can inform them. We'll get to that when we talk about these models and data, but for now it's an aside. Okay, so we're gonna put in these rates. We're gonna have the same rates that's gonna apply for all the people. Now, each person is gonna have a different circumstance, but they're gonna have the same, for now, the same cessation rate, the same relapse rate, and the same initiation rate. Later, tomorrow, we'll probably put into effect peer pressure effects, which will get one person to be, feel more peer pressure from, from other students maybe to start smoking, and it's not always gonna be the same initiation. But for now, cessation and relapse, we're gonna make we're gonna make the same across all agents. We'll relax that assumption later. Okay. Maybe also through targeted smoking cessation campaigns, maybe some will will have access to support groups or or you know, uh, patches or what have you. Okay, so they're all going to share the same initiation rate, all share the same cessation rate and relapse rate, but they're they're going to be going at different, you know, in, with different cessation and 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 relapse patterns. Okay, so we're gonna if they share those rates, where could those rates live? Those rates could live where in the model? They could live in. I'll give you a hint. Begins with M. Maine. Maine is exactly right. Wow. I thought I was going to have to spell it out. Okay. You ready? So we're going to drag in parameter 
from palette, and we're going to call it initiation rate. Are we ready with that? Initiation rate. And it's going to be a double value. And its value is going to be, by default, 0 0.1. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Our secret is we're going to have some interventions. So we're going to change this, lower it, and then lower the initiation. But for now, we dragged in initiation rate, and it's going to be called a value of 0 0.1. Hmm? Now, again, there are folks in the room who, who are not interested in doing the modeling themselves, but this starts to give you a sense of like where the assumptions are in the model. Like there's these parameters and the model's gonna depend, the dynamics in the model, the mechanisms, the exact timing are gonna depend on these parameters. Let's drag in another one. It's gonna be called cessation rate. Also goes to main, cessation rate. And yet another, ladies and gentlemen, another which is going to be called relapse rate. Are we ready? Relapse, relapse rate. Oh my goodness. There we go. Relapse rate. Ladies and gentlemen, see that? And the initiation rate is going to be a value of 0.1 by default, unless we change it for a scenario. The cessation rate will be a value of four. That's a per year value. So it means about four times per year, they're going to try to quit. And the relapse rate by default will be six. Um, six. So, so on average, they'll they'll stay quit for about one sixth of the year. Um, or you could say if they are, yeah, um, that's probably the best way to put it. They'll say they'll stay quit for about one sixth of the year on average. It turns out their average time is one over this. Um, so we have an uh, initiation rate, cessation rate, and relapse rate. The values were 1.0 by default, 4.0 by default, and, and uh, relapse 6.0. Okay. Now there's a there's a, a meaning that's completely consistent with the with what you understand in biased statistical terms. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to get into this right now. Okay, so these are in main now. So we can have different assumptions about them. Let's go to person now. We're going to person. Oh, sorry. No, no. Do you need this up on the screen? Yeah. Cessation, rate. Cessation rate, relapse rate. Oh, you know what? This needs to be larger. I don't know. I guess that other one was larger. Here we go. There we go. Is that better? Uh, four, 4.0 4 by default. So that means on average, they will stay quit for about a quarter of a year or three months because the average time in the state is one over this value. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And relapse rate is 6.0. So the average time is two months or one sixth of a year. The average time here is one quarter of a year or three months. The average time that they will stay from initiation is about 10 years. Okay. Okay. So that's that's for the model as a whole. They're shared by all parameters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna we're gonna use these. Are we ready? Okay. Who needs help? Who needs who needs help? The TAs are just yearning to help. They're 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 ready to help in any way. They can sit beside you and work with you if you'd like, and I'm serious about that. They can, they can, um, you know, uh, help on an ongoing basis if anyone would like. We've had that in past boot camps. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to now go, and we're going to go to person, and guess what value we'll use for this transition? Anyone? We will use the what? Initiation rate. So let's 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 clean this up a bit. This is no longer going to be a timeout. It's going to be a guess what? A rate. And guess what that rate will be? 
initiation rate, but it lives in main. So we have to say main dot initiation rate. Hmm? And let's let's give it a nice name. I, I it, we should call it initiation. Let's just show it a name because it it makes it more transparent. Are we ready? Would you like a little bit more time here? TAs monitor the chat as well. Okay. Okay. Guess what we'll do for the cessation rate? Good. It'll be a rate transition. Yeah. Yes, it'll be the cessation rate. Where does the cessation rate live? It lives in main dot cessation rate. You got it exactly. That's exactly it. And let's give it a name. It'll be called cessation, or we could call it quitting, right? If you want it to be more informal, cessation. And here you go. Um, guess what, what this one will be. So, so this one will be a rate given by main cessation rate. That means each person will be like rolling the dice according to cessation rate for when they quit smoking. And guess what this one will be? This will be what? Relapse rate. So we'll call its name relapse. There we go. Relapse. And guess what? It'll be a what? Will it be a timeout, a condition, a message, uh, agent arrival, or a what? Rate. And what will its rate be? Main dot relapse rate. That's it. That's it. Make sure it builds. There you go. There you go. Make sure it builds and Bob's your own. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. What a, what an exciting thing. Okay. Um so make uh, make sure it builds and let's run it. Okay, who needs more time though? Do you, does anyone want me to um show anything? Do you want me to show anything on the screen? Anyone remote or local? Do you want me to show anything? Anyone? Want me to Yes sir. Sure, please. Under main. Under main, yep. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yep. Under main. Well, population size of an integer. Yeah. Rates are doubled. So what's the difference? Yeah, so the population great question. Oh, thank you. Um population size is an integer because it's a count of people we want in the population. Whereas the rates are um they can be in general decimal quantities like 0.1 or 0.2 or it's not a count. It's a it's a it's a rate. It's like a what what mathematically we call the real value. So it could be 0.34 or 0.12. And um and therefore it's it's not a count, it's uh it's yeah. it's one of these decimal values. Yeah. So double means decimal values. I'm sorry. Yeah, double double means a Technically, it's what's called a double precision floating point value. And what that means is there'll be like 3.24 or 1.89 or, or 37.22. It's it's a value, it's not a count. It's a, it's a um, what what I know my health health folks uh, colleagues sometimes call a decimal value. It's a it, what we call mathematically a real value. It's a it's a value that, that can be fractional. Yeah. Next question. Is yeah. like the oval is actually the pointer for the population. Like so if we change the oval as a some like some sort of an image, like let's say put a human being or something in the Uh that's correct. Yeah. If we had done that up front, um then it would show a human. This is is kind of uh showing 
the image associated with this population is people in this population. And so it shows this image. It used to be that this is where it showed relative to what point the people will be spread out. And I'm not sure if that's still true. Um, it is, do you think? Okay. You, you have to check a box, I think, to make it. So, okay. You can still do that. But, but um, it, it often puts this so that you can know like where you want it to show the, the image of all the people. Um, so you could drag this over and and show that maybe like want it down here so it'll show it um and it won't mess things up up here. So this this is just kind of a convenient thing to show um the the population will be shown to the right or to down and to the right of this in this sort of area. I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, and lastly, yes. So there are two quadrants. So whatever we have in the left quadrant it's supposed to control the change in the right quadrant. If that's well, possible. this is just an informal convention that okay. often it's displaying things over here. So generally we kind of put things over here just so it doesn't get in the way, like visually in the way of this. It's nothing deep. It's just we, we want to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't put, get put over it. Great question. Okay, so if I run this model, who needs more time? Do we need more time here? Okay, so if I run this model, what do I expect to see relative to what, what I saw before? Anyone? What, do, what would I see? See transition on the Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Some would stay as uh, never smoker and yeah. become current smoker. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So who are these greens? Yeah, who are the green ones? Never, never smokers. smokers. Who are the reds? Yeah, Current, and who are the gray? Former, Former smoker. smoker. And why are the red and gray sort of flashing? Because they're changing back and forth. They're going back and forth in smoking status between current and former. And the greens are ones that are never smoking. They're not blinking because they're not going back and forth to anything. But over time, you notice the greens are going down. Why is that? Because they are more and more of them are initiating. Yeah. Um, now, if we had time, and there are versions of this model where we would make initiation age specific, because you know it is the fact it is the fact that many of those who start smoking start smoking in their teenage years or young twenties. But not many too not too many people start smoking in their 40s, 50s, 60s. On the other hand, sedation, a lot of that occurs later in life. And and relapse can can occur. Another thing we would could readily capture in an age-based model, um, with a little bit of mechanism, we could capture the people are less likely to relapse each successive month, depending on how long they've been a former smoker. So the longer they've been a former smoker, they've been a former smoker only a day, there's actually a significant chance, or say for a week, there's a significant chance in the next week they'll fall back into smoking. If they've been a former smoker for 10 years, the chance they'll fall back into smoking in the next week is quite low. And so we can actually capture that quite readily in an agent-based model because we capture a person's history, how long they've been smoking. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we, we've captured some really good things here. Um, and uh, I am tempted to, to do one final push. So I'm going to save this as version three. Here we go. And we are going to put it up on the site. Okay, here we go. And I am uploading this model, if anyone wants it, to, to the site. Okay, I'm, I want to finish the thought. I want to finish the thought. We've got all the pieces in place to understand the next step. And the next step is extremely important conceptually and exciting. 
and it will round out the day with, with respect to the model building. Can I show it to you? Can I show it to you? Or would people, are people so burnt out you wanna you wanna go to a case study and we leave it to tomorrow? Are we do, do you wanna make one more push? We'll take about 15 minutes. Okay, 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 let's do it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the palette. And we're going to add a heart disease state chart. Heart disease state chart. Okay, there we go. You ready with that? Are, are we okay with that? Okay. Okay, next. I would like you to put in two states. This is kind of old hat for you now. So I'd like you to put in a first state called healthy heart. And I'd like you to put in a second state called heart disease. Heart disease. Are we okay with that? I'm sorry? Uh, good question. We will, we can have death and we'll do that a little bit later, okay? So healthy heart and heart disease, and we're going to have a transition between them that is going to be uh, reflecting developing heart disease. So I'm gonna put it here, developing heart disease. We could call it heart disease incidents or something like that. Um, okay. Um, and we're going to make this, the value of this, and, and you're gonna see the logic here in how it mirrors what we just did. We did something ugly. I introduced you to cancer of the semicolon. Remember that? How could you forget? Remember that? I know it was a bit traumatic, but it's good to talk about it. Okay, so we're gonna put in a variable called heart disease hazard rate. I'm, I'm, I'm using this, oh, okay, now, I, now I'm really in, in, in trouble. Okay, hazard rate, and don't put the quote in there. Oh, there we go, heart disease hazard rate. It's gonna be a double, and it's uh, going to be, um, uh, its initial value will be 0 0.005 per year. Oops, zero, sorry. Okay. Um, initial value will be 0 0.005. It's a double because it's one of these values I was talking about with Saba, with Saba um, which is a, a value um, per year. And, and it can be, you know, 39.2 or 1.45 or 0 0.002 or what have you. Okay, in developing heart disease, guess what that's going to be? If we've got a heart disease hazard rate, guess what this is going to be? What sort of transition? It's going to be a, a rate transition. And guess what its rate is going to be? What is its rate going to be? It's going to be rate going to be given by what? Follow the mouse, <laughs> heart disease hazard rate. It's gonna be given by whatever value of that variable is. Are we ready for this? Are we ready for it? Okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're most of the way through this, actually. We're most of the way through this. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. We're going to add in another variable here. Okay. Um, and this one is going to be um, uh, uh, visual size. This is just going to show, it's just going to show their, their size on the screen. And 
its value is going to be by default 10. Okay. I just want to show the ones with heart disease bigger. So they're going to grow. They're going to become bigger, like in a, a an inflamed heart. Okay. Are we okay with this? Visual size. Okay. So healthy heart, we're going to set visual size to be 10.0. That's the default, but but it's it we'll we'll just set it to be that. Do I need the semicolon? Do I need the semicolon? Yeah. And why do I need it? Tell yeah. so like, do it. Do it, right? You don't have to point like me, but you can do it. Okay. And for heart disease, we're gonna set the visual size to be what? Visual size to be 20. What is that going to mean? Well, we're going to make them bigger. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the cusp of greatness. We're on the cusp of just beauty. Okay, some others still not going wild, but okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we created a variable called visual size and we set it to 10 when we're in healthy heart and 20 when we're in heart disease. And guess what it's going to affect? The size of what? Of the, follow the mouse, of the oval. So we're gonna go up to the oval and we're going to set the radius of the oval to be what? The visual size, right? So we're going to set the radius of that oval to be given by visual size. And to do that, you have to do this. Okay, I'm going to pause right after this to make sure everyone is coming along because I think I'm leaving people behind. So what did I just do? Let, let's just let's just go through this whole process. First of all, I dragged in this state chart entry point. I dragged in this state, this state, and I put this line, I put this transition between, make sure it's, it's green on both sides. I added a variable called heart disease hazard rate, and I made it a value of 0.05. It's still a double. That's going to be the rate at which they developed this. So I made this a rate transition given by that. Are we okay with that? And then I created another variable called visual size, also a double I set to be 10. And then for this state, I said set, set visual size to be 10, which really isn't needed, but it's just good as a precaution. And for this, for this state, I set it to be 20. And then I went over, so I, I set the visual size to indicate whether they have heart disease or not, just to make it visual. And then I went over to the oval and said, hey, make them whatever visual size says, make it whatever, however big they are on the screen. Hmm? Well, what will happen if I run this thing right now? Can anyone say? If I run it, what do you think I'll see? What do you think I'll see? Anyone? What do you think I'll see? Yes, the heart disease folks will be what? Bigger. Bigger. Okay, so let's run it. Let's run it with a small population. So now we have never a current former and we have heart disease and, and, and no heart disease. Who are these people that are big here? They're people with what? Heart disease. Heart disease. And how about the people that are smaller? They're people without heart disease, with a healthy heart, right? And then, then we have red and gray indicating smoking status. But ladies and gentlemen, is it possible? So right now, does their smoking status impact the heart disease in the model? Right now, does it impact it at all? No. Does it impact it in real life? Does someone's smoking status impact whether they can, they're subject to heart disease? Hugely. Let's capture that. 
in a literally one minute. Can we do that? And how we've done it over the mirror, what we've done twice now, making them bigger if they have heart disease and making them change color. We added, we have a variable. So here, do we have a variable for their risk of developing heart disease? Right now? Do we have that? We actually do. Right there. See that variable? Does a heart disease hazard rate? Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, let's set that variable. Let's set the rate per year that they develop heart disease to be different if they're in the never smoker state, current smoker state, and former smoker state. Does that make sense? So if they're a current smoker, is their rate for developing heart disease higher or lower? So the rate of developing heart disease, the risk per year of developing heart disease, will it be higher in a current smoker state compared to a never smoker state? Yeah, it'll be higher, right? And if they if they then quit smoking, will it go up or down? Down. down but maybe not quite as far down as in the never smoker state, right? Because they've still done some damage and and there's some some uh some accrued um damage. So let's in never smoker, let's all we have to do is assign to the heart disease hazard rate, just like we assigned to color. We'll assign to the heart disease hazard rate. Are we okay with that? Hearing no objection. Okay, um, heart disease hazard rate. There we are. Heart disease hazard rate. Mm -hmm. Hazard rate. I don't know why it says rates. Hazard rate um, equals, and we're going to set it um, to be the heart disease hazard rate. Okay, um, I should have taken this down, but uh, we're going to set it to be uh, zero point from for never smoker it'd be zero point zero zero five, about half a percent per year. Okay, that's while they're a never smoker, they will have a lower chance of developing heart disease. Are we okay with that? When they're a current smoker, they will have a higher or lower heart disease hazard rate. Higher indeed. Well spoken. And what will it be? Well, we'll make it 0 0.04. Okay. Um, so that means on average, they will have about 25 years as a smoker, as a current smoker before developing heart disease on average. That's one over that, in case you were wondering where I'm computing that. And be one over that on average. That's if you have a rate, the average time until you leave is one over that rate. Okay. If it's a fixed rate. Okay. And former smoker will have the heart disease, heart disease hazard. And really, I should do the autocomplete hazard rate equals 0 0.01. Okay. So what did I do? For never smoker, I made it heart disease has a rate 0 0.005, half a percent. Current smoker, I made it heart disease has a rate equals 0 0.04. So on average, 25 years until they develop heart disease. Former smoker, heart disease has a rate equals 0 0.01. Make sure it builds. Okay. And I'm going to be posting this soon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we captured it. We captured the fact that current smokers have a higher risk of developing heart disease than never smokers. While in a never smoker state, you have a comparatively low chance of developing heart disease. While a current smoker, you have a higher chance. And while a former smoker, you have a lower than current smoker chance, but still higher than average. Okay, so let's, let's, let's run this model. And we will run, I'm going to run the large one. I'm going to run the large one. Here we go. There we go. And I'm going to post this model. Post haste. Okay, so here we go. I'm posting it. 
And there's our model there running. And you'll notice that I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it here. You'll notice that there are quite a few people who have developed heart disease. How do we know that? If I look at this, who are the ones who have developed heart disease? The larger ones. Do you notice what colors they tend to be? Particularly red, with some being gray, right? Green, there are some with heart disease, but it's comparatively a small portion of the green population. Whereas of the red population, I'd say it's maybe half, maybe a little bit more than half that are that have heart disease. For the green population, maybe it's 20%. Tomorrow we're gonna learn how to report these things. Okay, we'll, we'll learn how to show the breakdown and stuff like that. But for now, We've actually captured this, this essential thing. We've captured the interaction of heart disease, ladies and gentlemen, and, and uh, smoking. And we've captured them in a way that will tomorrow allow us to ask some intervention questions. Let's suppose, what would the impact be if we could lower smoking initiation, or if we could increase smoking cessation, quitting from smoking. How would that impact heart disease? But like Saba asked before, could we represent death? And tomorrow we're gonna to do that. We're gonna we're gonna have in this model, people with heart disease have a higher risk of death than people without heart disease. And we're gonna be able to capture that as well. And we're gonna be able to capture the fact that smoking cessation can impact the overall number of deaths that occur in a 20 year period. Smoking prevention will also impact it and maybe more fundamentally impact both the distribution of smokers and the number with heart disease. We're gonna be able to see all that tomorrow. But for now, I hope you all pat yourselves on the back because what you've done is great. I, and I'm serious about You've been exceptional in terms of following this along. And my hat is off to you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed by how focused you've been on this. Um, this was not easy. Um, it shows uh, a rather subtle thing, which is interaction of different state charts, but we've managed to accomplish it and, and have this nice visual display of it. I do want to highlight that this model in its entirety is up on the drive. So if you go to the models built in class, you'll find the successive versions. This one is there. So ladies and gentlemen, it is in the nature of things that the student succeeds the master and Wade um, has a little case study to share with us on modeling in a, uh, in, in a, in a uh, community set. Wade, are you good with that? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, maybe we'll keep it to about half an hour or so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. So I cede the floor um, to my astute uh, doctoral student, uh, Wade McDonald. Um, Wade has many uh, has has many uh, sort of uh, uh, distinctions to recommend him. Um, he is uh, the original author of what I think is one of the most sophisticated agent-based models in the world now for COVID-19, the model that some of you are working with in the SHA. Um, he started before the pandemic was declared. Uh, it was used with Saab uh, back there for Northern communities early on. And it's developed in a ways, in ways we never would have anticipated to, to take into account multiple you know, uh, lineages, that is uh, uh, variants of concern, um, many, many types of questions involving uh, flow of patients and involving measures focused on long-term care, focused on acute care, focused on, on uh, schools, focused on workplaces, work from home orders, regional lockdowns, all sorts of matters. Um, it is a matter of profound significance that Wade was able to put into place a model that stood the test of time. It's like putting in place the foundation 
of a home that turns into the Empire State Building or something. And this is just one of many models for which Wade has been responsible. Wade's also done groundbreaking work with pertussis, with several models in chicken pox as well, um, and shingles uh, along with that. He's also been involved in antimicrobial uh, resistance modeling um, and has uh, further helped out with a number of, of key models in the lab um, in, in many different spheres. But Wade right now is gonna talk about a particularly significant type of modeling project, one that involves um, uh, participatory um, uh, guidance by a community. So Wade, I think we'll stop this recording and I'll turn